So that's why the Lord set up his prophets. That's why he set up his men to teach this word. And, and Yahweh Shai told him what? To occupy. You know, okay. So we being occupied and studying, like the brother said. And what is the what is the fruit of studying? Is the fruit of studying just a study for yourself? No, it's to do what? You just read it in verse 9. Go ye therefore into the highways and bid them, I mean, excuse me, and as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. You know, and the marriage, I, I had the um, etymology real quick of the word marriage. It says, meaning a union of a man and a woman for life by marriage, a particular matrimonial union. So marriage just basically means a union. A union is something coming together. So who's going to come together? Obviously, Yahweh Shai and his people, his elect, his elect, the Israelites. That's the right. Tribes of Israel. And it says, in early, uh, it, um, let me keep on, meaning the marriage vow, formal declaration or contract by two, by which two in, uh, join in wedlock. Let me read that again one more time. Shalat there. The marriage vow, formal declaration or contract by which two join in wedlock. So like I had said earlier, if you understand the scriptures, if you know the history of the of basically what people call the Old Testament, okay, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, there was a contract that was made uh, starting with Moses too, you know? I mean, not starting with Moses, but it continued on with Moses and the children of Israel. You know, that, that covenant that, that the children of Israel went into is what? A contract. So ultimately, we know that the Lord has promised his people going back all the way to Moses, even going all the way back to Abraham. Even really going back to Adam, when you really understand it on a spiritual level, there was no formal um, covenant that was made with Adam. But we understand that Adam, through the spirit, you know, represents the Israelites, represents yeah. the chosen seed. So the chosen seed has a contract with the Heavenly Father, which with his son, you know, because we read that in Matthew 22, the king made a marriage for his son, you know, so we're being, um, we're contracted or we have a covenant with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and, and at the end, the Most High is going to redeem his people, you know, through that marriage, so. Kind, so I got, uh, to back this brother up and his spirit that's coming out right now about the Most High being married to us, the Kain. nation of Israel, Kain. which are you so-called blacks, so-called Hispanics? And so called Native Americans, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 14. It says, Turn, O backsliding children, saith Yahweh, for I am married unto you, mm -hmm. and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Mm -hmm. So, this never happened before. This is talking about uh, the salvation that's coming at the end of days, where you know we're never going to go into captivity of them anymore. So-called Black Americans, so-called Puerto Ricans, so-called Dominicans, so-called Mexicans, so-called Native Americans, so-called West Indians, Jamaicans, so-called Haitians. We're never going to serve slavery and captivity anymore to any other nation. Yep. The Most High is married unto us, so we're bidding people back to that marriage. You know what I'm right. saying? This time Yahweh Shai came because the Lord, the Most High Yahweh, did away with our people. So uh, Yahweh Shai came. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, it was given unto him to bring us back to the father. Uh -huh. So now this marriage right here, this is the last uh, time that uh, our people is going to uh, go through this, this captivity, this hardship. Yep. So that marriage, we're bidding people to this marriage. It's very serious. It's a very serious time we're living in. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Israel, you know, they have uh, that spirit that, you know, uh, if things are going to continue on for uh, eternity, that we're going to go into captivity. We may have high times. We may have low times now. The time that's coming is going to be the greatest times in, 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 in forever, forever and ever. That's the salvation. Part of that salvation is called the marriage. We just finished reading that I am married unto thee. Who's that talking about? Yahweh, the creator of all things, has a people. He's symbolically married unto them. You know what I'm saying? This is all symbolic, parabolic talk. It's a union. It's you a have union. to study the Bible so you can understand these words. It's a union, like the brother said. Uh, why? In our mind. In our mind, the contract, the covenant. We agree with everything in the Bible. When a man and a woman is together, what they call it, the so-called holy matrimony. Holy matrimony, right? Mm -hmm. Holy meaning true matrimony. I'm not too sure about that, that word. But they have to agree with each other. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's how the marriage works. So we have to agree with everything the Bible says, okay? And we turn back to the Most High in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai. And we're bidding people... To, to that zone right there, yeah. which is uh, we're gonna wait for that marriage to come 
which is coming with the, the chariots of God. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the Lord, we're going to meet the Lord in, in, in the heavens, in the clouds. Okay, yeah, the, yeah. the angels is coming with Yahweh Shai. So the elect, that's going to happen to the elect. Those who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So that's this right. is our message here today. Time, time. And basically that's the gospel, you know? The word gospel means good news. So that is the good news. If you are a true Israelite, you know, and this is resonating with your spirit, this should be good good news. You know, but at the same time, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's always balance to everything, you know? So this is a good news onto the elect. But to the rest of the nation, basically, if you don't repent, you're going to be put to death. You know, the, the Heavenly Father is going to have to kill you in order for you to understand what's going on. Because you, you're going to, you, two-thirds are completely gone, you know, in their mind. They're like a woman that uh, is, is symbolically, to use this in symbology, they're like a woman that's cheating on her husband. Yeah, she adultery. Don't want to, yeah, adultery. She doesn't want to come back. You know, so what's going to have to happen? According to the law, according to God's word, and that's... Isn't that in the Ten Commandments? No, I don't want to speak wrong, but in the Ten Commandments, is that in there? The adultery? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's the, the, uh, I believe it's the Fourth Commandment. Right. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So that that's the Ten Commandments. So even for you so-called Christians and Catholics that don't believe in the whole law, but the Ten Commandments even says thou shalt not commit adultery. So what what's the penalty for adultery without the um without the uh, uh excuse me without the grace of Yahweh Shai? It's death. So yeah, this is a grace period right now that Israel has to repent and come back to the Lord. When Yahweh Shah came, it was to come preach the gospel, to preach the good news that, hey, you have a second chance, basically. The Lord is giving you another chance to repent and to come back and and, and, and uh, do what's right. You know, but, but two-thirds is still not going to do that. And we read that, you know, we opened up with that, that um, they are not worthy, you know. Um, they're bid into the marriage, but they're not worthy of the marriage, so... You know, we, we're really searching for those that are, are worthy, you know. That's really the point of why the Lord even sent his men out, you know, to, to preach it on to the, those that want to repent. You know, so, yeah, that's gonna, something? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Salakia, that uh, actually, uh, thou shalt not commit adultery is actually the seventh commandment Turn. in Exodus, the 20th chapter, verse uh, 14. So it's a commandment of uh, a man and a woman, uh, you know, a woman is not supposed to commit adultery. Uh, right. with, uh, you know, go with another man, and right. a man is not supposed to sleep with another man's woman. Mm -hmm. Okay, so That's the Lord, I mean. we've been going through marriage, and the Lord is married unto us. We just finished reading that. Yep. So, uh, and it's talking about the laws. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's what it's talking about the commandments, the statutes of the Bible, all the words of the Bible. We have to keep that in faith. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? That's part of our culture. That's part of our life. The the scripture says. These words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That's right. So th this is talking about the Son of the Most High. Yahweh Shai encompasses the whole Bible. So he's our Savior and he's coming back for us. And we just got to keep that, keep these scriptures, okay, in the best of our ability, you know what I'm saying? Because some of these laws in this kingdom, we cannot say we're keeping all the laws because it's a polluted kingdom. Right. Just because, you know, they can put pork into certain products mm -hmm. and you might say they're keeping the laws. But, uh, you know, you're, you're speaking pres presumptuous, yeah. uh, pre you know what I'm saying? You're speaking things that you don't even know. Presumptuous. Yeah, yeah, because they, 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 you know, Esau, the devil, the so-called white man, and the, these mad scientists and, the, and these pharmacies, these uh, ph uh, ph pharmacological uh, corporations or whatever, yeah. they, they, they inject uh, foods, it's polluted. Mm -hmm. They could be uh, putting all kinds of uh, unlawful uh, ingredients, put it like that, into these foods, into these liquids, into these drinks. Uh, and, and especially in these medicines, I heard uh, certain uh, uh, certain uh, medicines have pork in it. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. I forgot which, which there's one specifically that a lot of people know about. But uh, that's why we can't say we can keep the full law. You know what I'm saying? Sure. There's certain laws that you can only t keep when you're in a, in a position of rulership, a righteous rulership. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Yahweh Shai had to come because we were going to uh, experience captivity on our enemies. So we, we're living on the grace right now in mercy. Yep. Yeah, I so, got a quick scripture. Yeah, go ahead, bro. This is um, Matthew 5 and um, 28. So, come on. 5 and 28. Actually, I'm going to start at 27. It says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. So, that precept for that is what the brother was saying. Um, the seventh commandment. Out of the Ten Commandments, the Seventh Commandment said, Thou shalt not commit adultery. So Yahweh Shai was reiterating um, the Old Testament, which shows you that he did come and he was preaching the Old Testament. That's right. 
So, but he also said this, 28, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart, which is in his mind. So even if you're just looking at a woman and you, uh, you're thinking about having sex with her and you know that she's married to another man, you're actually committing adultery. You know, so the Lord actually made it uh, more spiritual. He made the laws more spiritual. So he did not do away with the laws, all right? Because a lot of people think that. And even the people, like I said, that, you know, people that call themselves Christians and Catholics, or you say you call yourself believing in the Bible, all these ways of this world, you should be looking at it as wickedness. You know, because the scriptures talk about sighing and crying for the abominations that are done. Because that's an abomination when you turn on a rap song and they talking about having a brother is talking about having sex with his brother's wife. That's right. You know, that's wickedness. But somehow R and B, R and B. Right, R and B, right, right. R and B. You know, that, that music stuff got a lot of uh, wickedness in it. It's rooted into it. And and our people enjoy that. But actually reggaeton to, too. Reggaeton. We can't live in ten tribes. The Northern Kingdom yeah, escape. Yeah, can't escape. Because yeah, uh, yeah. one of one of uh, Omar, uh, what's it gotta mean? Don Omar? Don Omar. But his yeah. I, I believe it one of his First songs that blew up big was talking about cheating with his brother, his uh, best friend's wife. Wow, and it was with uh, I think it was with Daddy Yankee. But if you listen to it, if you're a man of the Lord and you go in the scriptures, you, this was a mega hit. You know what I'm saying? It's something that you could go to YouTube or something, and it probably had 50 million likes and shit. You know, 50 million That's views and likes all across the world. But what is the message there? Yeah. Adultery. Yeah. That you know you look at you look at punished severely. By that, you know, yep. that's why Yahweh Shah had to come in grace and mercy because, but that's that's a serious offense. Yeah, you know, they even have laws in this kingdom. Yeah, they, ha they have laws in this kingdom on the books right now. It's called a crime of passion. That if a man finds a, a man actually in, in in an act of intercourse with his wife and he kills him, there's a very good chance. I mean, the probability of him getting off is high. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> he could get off with uh, get away with mur a murder. And it's called a crime of passion, and it has to do with adultery. So even in this kingdom, they have, uh, they they know it's a serious thing. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it could cause you know, a lot of spirits to manifest, a lot of demons. You know what I'm saying? A lot of thoughts of murder, hate, and mm -hmm. kill, killing people straight on the spot for sleeping with another man's wife. So this is how the Most High looks at us dealing with these philosophies. Right. So you were going into something. Yeah, I was just gonna. Uh, I actually was gonna build on that point. You just said it. So. The brother just said that's another philosophy you know doing that that um basically when you commit a physical adultery when you when you sleep with your brother's wife you're committing a double adultery you're committing a spiritual adultery and the physical because not only are you breaking the laws of the bible but break by breaking the laws of the heavenly father that's committing adultery because that's another philosophy the most highest philosophy is here in the bible that's what he gave us so that's what we follow but when you disobey what's written in this book, now you're going into another philosophy, which is another woman, so to speak. You know, I mean, excuse me, another another man, basically, another man. As us as a woman, that's like another man. That's like us going on to another man. That's how the Most High um, views it. Because if you're the husband, you're supposed to dictate the rules of your household. You know, you're supposed to order what you want right in your house. Well, this is the Lord's house, the earth. The scriptures say that heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. So th this earth is his. This belongs to him. So he already set, he already put a set amount of rules and um, laws, statutes, and commandments that we are to follow on the planet Earth. So when you disobey these laws and willingly, because you know everybody goes off unwillingly, we in the flesh. But if you willingly say that you believe in the Bible, but then you don't, um, you don't, you promote rap music and and like the brother was saying, all type of music, R and B, reggaeton, whatever, um, hip hop. You basically are being a wife that's being with another husband. So you're not really worthy of this marriage that's between the Lord, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and the, the Israelites, the people, of the, the, you know, his people that he chose. Yeah, they, they promote adultery. In the, in the, in the point is, they, they, they promote adultery in that music. Right. And Spanish music for the Ten Tribes, so-called Hispanics, you know what I'm saying? And amongst the, uh, the Southern Kingdom, you know, so-called uh, Judah, Benjamin Levi, and that's some of the top music is talking about adultery or so-called creeping around, you know what I'm saying? Scripture says once you have a wife, you have to keep her as a wife, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Once you pop that woman, that's your wife. You got to provide her with food, clothing, and shelter, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And the duty of marriage. So uh, the point is uh, they promote 
Uh, not a, the breaking of all the commandments in in this in these music. Okay. They talk about a murder. They talk about uh, adul adultery, uh, serving other gods. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like that that these uh, the rappers where uh, Caesar Borgia, Caesar Borgia is the fake Jesus Christ. Yeah, the that's white, another god. The white European version, what they put as Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. They wear the uh, the so-called Jesus piece. You know what I'm saying? And gold with diamonds. That thing be costing hundreds of thousands of dollars. Sure. So uh, rap, a lot of a lot of the rap music, I want to say all rap music, promotes the breaking of the commandments. We're, we're, we're focusing on adultery, okay? There's a spiritual adultery as well. And why is there a spiritual adultery? Because uh, we we are considered a woman or the wife of the Most High, Yahweh. Right. And his, his son actually came in these days that we're married to the son, Yahweh Shai. He's going to bring us back to the Father. This is written all in the scriptures, okay. so you can understand. It, it's a returning back to our true power, okay? Because mm -hmm. we are Israelites. We're not blacks. We're not Hispanics. We're not Native Americans. All right. In 2017, we should know that we have an ancient origin. You know what I'm saying? All people have ancient origins. What is the ancient origin of our people? We're Israelites, so we got to return back to the uh, to the to the Bible. Kind, kind. Could you give me uh, Second John's Second John? Um, the first chapter and the first verse. You know, because basically the Lord doesn't really, you know, if you if you're not if you hearing these words right now, you don't want to repent, and this is not for you, then this is just not for you. Just plain and simple, you're just gonna you're gonna have to be put to death, man. Because the grace is only a period of time that you have to repent to use the grace, um, excuse me, the blood of Yahweh Shai as a grace to repent from your sins because you have a second chance. That's the gospel. That's the good news. But if you don't take that second chance, you have to be put to death. But, you know, the brother is, is breaking it down, you know, the adultery and all that. But why does the scripture say this here in our second John? You could read that. Second John. And then I'm going to break it down. Second John, which one? The first verse in the, the first chapter, first verse. The elect lady. Okay, uh, the elder to the elect lady right there. One. Okay. The book of Second John, uh, verse one. The elder unto the elect lady. Right to the elect lady. So this word is only being preached. Really, we're preaching it to the whole world, to all nations. But it's really only for the elect lady. Cause who's the elect lady? We already brought out enough precepts to show you that we're the woman. The nation of Israel is the woman and the heavenly father is the husband. So the elect lady is going a little bit deeper now because it's not only just, okay, Israel, Israel is a woman. Now this is talking about an elect lady. Who is this elect lady? That's the elect, the one third of the nation That's of right. Israel. It's not all Israel. So all Israel is not going to make it. In the kingdom of heaven, the scriptures say all Israel shall be righteous. But right now we're talking about before the book of Revelation, we're talking about first uh, the book of second John. You know, once we go into Revelation, it, it, it pretty much is all the prophecies of the last days, the mark of the beast, you know, the war of Armageddon that's going to take place primarily in the Middle East, you know, when the other nations try to fight against the Lord, Yahweh Shai, and the angels, right, the nuclear war, and all the other prophecies that's, you know, all the other destruction, but the salvation is only for who? For the elect lady. That's so continue right. reading that, brother. The elder unto the elect lady and her children. Whom I love in the truth. In the truth, which is these scriptures. So again, if you're not in these scriptures, then you cannot be of the elect lady. It's just plain and simple. And, and the truth and Yahweh Shai is really not for you right now. You know, because his his blood it was only enough to redeem the one third. Even though he could have, if he wanted to redeem the whole nation, he could have. But that wasn't the will of the Heavenly Father. Because it was already prophesied in the so-called Old Testament that only one third was gonna be brought through the fire. You know, and the Yahweh Shah's baptism, what he said, he shall baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. That's right. You know, so only the elect lady is gonna receive this. You got a point? Yeah, there was other, uh, there's many scriptures talk about uh, Israel being blinded mm. and uh, them not able to hear the truth. Huh? So, you know, it, it's prophecy and it's many prophecies actually that a uh, vast majority of the, of the Lord's people would not receive the truth in the last days. They didn't actually receive it when Yahweh Shai, so-called Jesus Christ, a black man, when he walked amongst them. Mm. He grew up amongst them from a boy. He did miracles. I believe, you know, uh, he was a young man when he did miracles yeah. with the, uh, 
in the marriage. Uh, yeah, well, actually, he died wedding. when he was 33. Yeah. But he was a young man when he died. Yeah, he did miracles. His the wedding, the yeah, wedding. Yeah, the water to wine. He was a young I mean, man. Yeah, the water to wine. Yeah. And there was many miracles. Though. The fame of him went throughout all the whole, all the coasts of Israel. Uh -huh. So they didn't believe when when the Messiah, the son of the, the power, the son of Yahweh, was amongst them. So that shows you right there, just from that one example alone, everybody can't receive the truth mm -hmm. because they didn't even receive it back then. Right, when okay. he was physically here. So how when he was gonna, physically back. It's going to take more faith now to believe, you know, to believe in uh, the words of this book. But meanwhile, they were seeing it. You know, we're reading about it. But remember, this New Testament was not written in the time that he was walking the earth. This New Testament is the testimony of him walking the earth. That's right. So we have to, we, you know, this is a, t a time of extreme faith. You know, you got to believe every word that's written in this book. You know, so like the brother was saying, not all Israel received it back when he was actually on the earth and they actually could witness the miracles he was doing. So how much more now in the last days? You know, that's why the scriptures talk about an elect. And actually, I want to get the word elect in a blue letter huh. real quick. It goes back to the Greek word electos. And I'm going to click on the word. I'm going to let Esau read this. Let me say this. Strong's G, 1588, Eclectos. 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 So it says elect, chosen, picked out, chosen by Yahweh to obtain salvation through Yahweh Shai. So this, if somebody is chosen, what does that mean? If, if you have a group of, uh, let's say you got a, a bunch of books that you like and you choose one book, what does that mean? The other, other rest of the books are not chosen. That means those other books are just excluded from that group of elect, basically, that chosen. Yeah. So in order to choose something, other things have to be excluded in order to choose that out of those things. But they may have their time, you know, they may have their time, but it's always about well, what's chosen. Right. I mean, you can't choose everything. Let's put it like that. When you choose something, uh, somebody's going to come up to you and say, why you didn't choose all or every, every choice you have? <laughs> no, because you chose it. Right. Well, Yahweh, the creator of all things, all right, he has a son named Yahweh Shai, which is so-called Jesus Christ. Is a black man. Right. They chose a specific number of Israelites to receive the truth. That's right. Okay, right. back in uh, back in two thousand years ago, and uh, those same spirits are back in his last days. Okay, yep. it's about a choice. Huh. At, you know, this is we're talking about the Creator of all things. They they made a choice, and we agree with it. Mm -hmm. We can't say oh that or you know that there's people that you know that want the whole nation of Israel first of all, and all nations at the same time to accept this, to That's accept great. the kingdom. It's not. It, that's not reality. You cannot choose all things all at once. That's madness. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Even in a bar, I, that's this, this is what I was gonna say. Even at a bar, they don't have a top shelf. Those are the top, top liquors, the top, uh, you know, yeah. liquors and top, you know, uh, alcohol that they have yeah. in that bar. There's nothing above that. You know what I'm saying? They're exclusive. You know what, what? I'm saying? You can't say, oh, you know, what, put a Budweiser out there. <laughs> nah, Budweiser. That's slow. It's filtered. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't have the same. Uh, strength in it, yeah, you know what I'm quality, saying? Yeah, not the same quality, you know? So I'm saying, so, you know, when the people, you know, they, they go for the exclusive, those who can afford it, you know what I'm saying? Okay. It just has a, a, a set-apart, uh, you know, vibration on these liquors. Yep. They have exclusive clothes, they have exclusive liquors, they have exclusive cars, and there's an exclusive people. Mm -hmm. The exclusive people on the earth is the elect of the nation of Israel, okay? Uh -huh. So I got a, a scripture right, right, right quick. Yeah, yeah. This uh -huh. is a... Uh, this is Galatians chapter 6, verse 16. It says, And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of Yahweh, okay, or the Israel of God. So we know the nation of Israel is the people of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But in this scripture, it, it, it shows you the same, uh, the same uh, topic we're, we're touching on is that there's a uh, elect lady, right. you know what I'm saying? To obtain the, salvation. The Israel of God, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, all Israel is of God, so why, why did he put it like that? Because mm -hmm. there's, uh, there's another scripture that says, uh, not all Israel, yeah. which is of Israel, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So these, these, this is talking about those who's doing the will, doing the will of the Lord, you know That's what I'm right. saying? Kind. Bidding those people to the marriage, doing the work out there, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It was not, not to say they're perfect, because you have to, uh, that's a, you have to strive for, for perfection, kind of. you know, seeking your house shy mm -hmm. and walking like he walked. But we have to agree with everything is in the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the Israel of God. You know what I'm saying? Everything the scripture says, we agree with it. You know what I'm saying? The bitter and the sweet. You know what I'm saying? Let's put it like that. Because people, you know, they try to mix 
too much too much sweetener to put it like that into the scriptures yeah. and it's not about that it's a, a very uh a lot of scriptures is very sweet very beautiful but that's not the whole scriptures you know what i'm saying yeah. so there's gonna come a time that's the kingdom of heaven where everything's gonna be sweet again so we're talking about the bitter and the sweet right now time, time. and that's the balance you know you gotta have balance so Again, if somebody's chosen to be saved, that means what? That other people are not being saved. It's, it's really that simple. You know, you have 10 pairs of sneakers, you choose one. You're not wearing all 10 pairs of those sneakers sure. at once. You wear one at a time. So the elect, the Greek word elect in that verse that we, uh, the brother read in 2 John, um, what was that, one? You know, the word elect, I'm gonna continue on the definition. It says to obtain salvation through Yahweh Shai. So again, this is the marriage. You know, this salvation is the marriage. That's exactly what the marriage is. Christians are called chosen or elect of God. The Messiah is called elect as appointed by God to the most exalted office conceivable. Like the brother said earlier, the, the basically the highest quality, the top shelf. So was everybody a Messiah? Was everybody the Messiah? No, there was only one Messiah. His name was Yahweh Shai. Not there wasn't there was not more than one, you know. So he was an elect of the Most High. That was one. Basically, he's the beginning of the elect because he was chosen out of the. I don't know how many people existed back then, but I would dare to say maybe a million or yeah, the first a lot of people. There was a lot of people on the planet Earth. That's the point. There was a lot of Israelites in the time that Christ uh, Yahweh Shai was walking the earth. So basically, he was elected by the Most High to be his son. You know, he would like he like the brother you just said that the first fruits. You know, the the first fruits of the chosen few. You know, the first the first spirits created, which Yahweh Shai was the first spirit created. Yeah. That's so right. there, there's there's many spirits that exist, but there's a first one that was created, and the the rest of the definition I'm gonna read, and then we can continue on. It says choice, select, i.e. the best of its kind or class. That's right, brother. Excellent. <laughs> you just said that, right? Excellence preeminent applied to certain individuals, Christians, which we know the Christians are the are true Israelites. Mm. You know, the Christians are basically the true believers. But today, you know, that definition has been uh, taken and is being used on the left hand, you know, by by people that say they're Christian or Christ, you know, Christianity. That's not even you know, that's not even really in the Bible. Christians is in the Bible. That was a, a name that was given, a title that was given on to those who was actually following after the Abu Shah. You know, so. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, so everything, uh, there, there's a, a choice. Choices being made. Uh, and uh, the Most High, Yahweh, the creator of all things, he made a choice. Mm -hmm. He created a son, the only begotten. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So, uh, you know, that's like saying the other angels are going to complain because why you chose you know, uh, what you chose, you know, the son, you know, your son, you know, because Michael, the archangel, that's a mighty angel, that's some sure. angel above all angels, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So, uh, so there's, there's always been an elect and a choice, a choice is, or an elect, you know what I'm saying, a chosen, a chosen people, or a choice, uh, everybody makes choices in his life, and, and, yep. and so does the creator, the creator of all things, he made a choice, or he had a chosen people. Mm -hmm. And back then it was the Adam. Adam. Adam was a chosen man. There was other people around during the time of Adam. You you would know that if you read the Bible, you study the Bible. The Spirit is dealing with you to discern the truth. That Adam was amongst uh, many people. You know what I'm saying? But Adam was chosen to have the Spirit of the Lord in him. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then uh, you had Noah. So that's like saying, well, you know, why there was uh, millions of people, or maybe possibly billions, at the time of Noah. So why why not choose everybody to be on that ark? Mm -hmm. Why have I mean, the, the, this, this is the mentality in these last days of the people on this earth. They're saying you know always actually question questioning the Creator. You know what I'm saying? You can't question the Creator. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that, that's what in Romans the ninth chapter it shows you that you know well, well, why why is the Lord choosing this or choosing that? Because He yeah. wants to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 